Hello again and welcome back to the Pricey Popcorn Podcast. I'm Ben Kelkis here with my boy Brady. We have a special guest today too. We got Grogu all the way here. He made an appearance. He had to come sit on the podcast. So, uh, you know, welcome to welcome to Grogu today. Yay, Grogu, all the way from a galaxy far, far away. Grogu's here to hang with us because today we are talking about what just wrapped up on Friday, The Mandalorian. Excellent show. We're going to, you know, go Dude, over Dude, I've been recap. so excited to get into this, man. Like, you texted me Friday morning before I got a chance to watch it, and I was like, holy <laughs> crap, I need to watch it. And usually I'm so quick to, like, just watch it. Like, I have to watch it first. Yep, I always, like, watch too. it at 11 with my dad, so I had to make sure, you know, we kept the schedule and everything. But when you texted me in the morning, I was like, holy crap, I am so excited to watch this. Um, and we'll get into the to the season finale later on but let's uh let's dig into kind of just the whole season as a whole so personally like i really liked it start to finish i thought this season was pretty fantastic and uh just you know just want to throw out we're trying to keep the spoilers low beginning of the episode but you know no promises true yeah like consider yourself warned again we're going to try to keep it spoiler free as long as possible but i don't know what you think off the top so off the top, I think it was just fantastic from start to finish. Um, I thought the cinematography from John Favreau this season was off the charts. was fantastic. Uh, Pedro Pascal, probably acting performance of the year across the board for any TV show or movie. Uh, I thought he was phenomenal, even though it's pretty much him voice acting for 95% of the time. Um, overall, just like, I mean, I loved it. I was worried going into the season based on the reports that, you know, they had out that it was going to be like way too like single episode story defined and not a big arching plot. I was worried about the season as a whole for it, but I don't know. I mean, the ending made up for it. Ending was fantastic. And then start to finish, like I said, I loved it. I loved the whole, the whole season. Um, I really liked Timothy Oliphant in the, in episode one. I liked his character. I was happy to see him in it and it just, it kicked off great. I don't know. What do you, what do you, what are you feeling? Yeah, I think it came out with a bang. The first episode was great because it was definitely, like, keeping with the Mandalorian's roots. Because, I mean, I know you said you were excited about the fact that it kind of started to bring in more of a cohesive, overarching plot line. But, like, a p big part of what made the Mandalorian successful in season one was the fact that they were very episodic. Uh, each, you know, each story, each episode is its contained story. Uh, so episode one comes out strong with that. And uh, because, it, you know, it's all kind of they, they just essentially got to rescue this one town and then yeah, he okay. moves on to his next part in the quest after that. And so I had some I knew, especially, you know, if you bring the Empire in in season one, you know, it's going to start to connect to some other stuff. So I knew I was going to have to, you know, get over myself and accept the fact that they were going to bring in a lot of these other Star Wars elements. Uh, but I think that they did it really well overall i'm super impressed with the season the more i sit and think about it the more i love it you know that that's been the problem with a lot of star wars stuff i've seen the last couple years is i move i leave the movie theater for like the force awakens and the last jedi thinking hey, you know i really like that or like i i really enjoyed that uh at least to some degree yeah the and then the awakens more you more. think the more you yeah, think about it you're I like is that it? that good like did yeah, i just like it because it's come out did i everything. like it just because it's star wars and like i mean like how can you sit you can't sit through Star Wars and not be like, oh, I like this leaving the theater. Right, because yeah, it's so as, much fun in the as moment. You, as you just like sleep on it, you're like, did they really do a good job? And I think now we can all agree that the you know sequel trilogy is just not that good. But getting back to the Mandalorian, I I loved it. I loved, yeah. I loved that they brought so much in this year. That they they kind of kicked it off in season one, but this year is just like they were throwing stuff at us that we didn't know we needed. We didn't know we needed Boba Fett to come back. We didn't know we needed all these new characters and all these new just like background lores. Like I'm not super familiar with the Clone Wars or any of the cartoon series. Like I watched them, but I don't remember. It's been, you know, a decade since I probably watched any of those. So I was excited that they're going deeper into that and just I mean, compared to the other Star Wars, it's just phenomenal like actual great movies. Well made, the cinematography's good, the acting's actually like something that stands out. It's not just like good because it's Star Wars. It's good because they, it's well a well made TV show from top to bottom. Um, but the only thing that I didn't like, and it's been pointed out to me so many times, is that every episode was kind of the same formula. 
It's, right, they just like they it, go beat a thing and then yeah, it's rescue it's, the ship. And he <laughs> needs to go somewhere to help Baby Yoda get somewhere, and then he has to do a side quest for these people that can help him find what he's looking for. And like every episode is the same, but I mean, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I really don't mind it. Like it is what it is. I'm not gonna sit here and say that this is the best season of television ever. Like, it has... Re- it, season three, like, they could do a better job of not doing that, but I'm not going to sit here and argue with you that they shouldn't because it worked. Every single episode was still good. Every single episode was like, I have no idea what's going to happen next. Right, and that was, like, the thrill the entire season is as they keep on incorporating more and more elements that are uh kind of they did a great job of balancing the fan service line while doing so but they bring in all this uh new stuff and you're kind of going into each episode thinking what's it going to be what's going to be new this time and they did a really good job of hitting us with a lot of stuff but still making it exciting every yeah, time yeah it's good on both fronts because not only is it great for the diehard star wars fans like us and people that just love star wars and would like it no matter what like if you like Star Wars and you see Boba Fett show up on the screen, you're just gonna go app. You're gonna go. You're gonna go crazy. You're gonna be so excited. But it's also great because it's like not Star Wars. Like it's not typical mm-hmm. Jedi's and Force and like it's not the typical Star Wars formula. So it's it's super enjoyable for people who don't even like Star Wars. Like it's exactly. It's just well. Like I said, it's well made television from top to bottom. The storytelling's great. It just so happens that it's. In the Star, Star Wars, Wars universe. universe, and right, and like I said, like yeah, they did. I mean, yeah, you you know, two years ago when the Mandalorian came out, I feel like if we said, if we tried to predict where it'd be now, we wouldn't be able to. Like, I wouldn't have guessed any of the big reveals that they had this no, season. No way. Happened. I would have thought maybe by the end of season two, they do one of those like, uh, oh my Jedi. god, they just showed somebody's face. Yeah, and like that, you get maybe one big reveal because that's what you're used to with a lot of like serial kind of stuff i remember game of thrones is kind of waiting the whole season for yeah it's one like, big thing i mean and i can't I, yeah i mean i feel like this season was definitely kind of like that um so just you know we're gonna get into some spoilers here so if you haven't seen the right. whole series or the whole season or even maybe the last episode i'd say you know maybe turn it off go watch it and then come back um i don't i don't like to give spoilers i don't want to be that guy that ruined the series for someone because is they, that a fact <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I well, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um. Anyway, so yeah, spoilers. Let's get into it. So, big character oh, I re- reveals. Okay, I, re- I remember what I was gonna say. Um, so yeah, like an episode where he goes to the rock and Grogu's sitting on the rock, connecting with a. Jedi we get friend. a name for Baby Yoda. Yeah, well, know, one first. we get a baby. We get a name for Baby Yoda, so he's not just Baby Yoda anymore. Uh, he has an actual name. He's Grogu, and he's you know we already know he's fifty years old, but we know he's Grogu now. And he was um, in the Jedi Temple. Um, but when he's sitting on the rock, connecting with the Force, we know that they're gonna have a big reveal at the end. Like what, uh, we knew that was coming. We knew the last episode was gonna have, or somewhere at the end, like the second half of the season, that we were gonna get some type of like Jedi reveal or Jedi like like you said I thought it was probably going to be just like a voice or like something at the end like like end scene credits to like hype up season 3 of like oh we see you know maybe like I thought it was going to be Kylo I thought we were going to see like a young Ben mm. Solo or something like that um oh he would be very young or like something like that make maybe we see leia maybe we see i don't know that's like something yeah. like maybe we see well, some type of like thing mm. to just hype up season three and it's a huge cliffhanger more than like actually getting anything right and above all i thought it would be somebody obscure that they kind of bring in now they they brought in ahsoka earlier in the season which was nice uh, as just i mean the act who I don't, i'm not sure rosario dawson she I, was fantastic she was great uh she played it really well yeah honestly a great like i was skeptical about uh bringing ahsoka into live action because that's a character i've only seen uh computer generated and i feel like it's tough to do a believable uh, take on you know a, a humanoid character as opposed to a straight up human you know you don't want the the makeup to look bad and I guess some people were complaining about the length of her tentacles yeah. because they weren't yeah. as long as they should have been because she appears in Star Wars Rebels and they're like super long but 
but you know it's... that's that's nitpicking. I think it didn't change the story. She did a great job, and did, you know it's yeah. You know. So she did a great job. The the action, the way. I mean, that's an example of how in this season they came out swinging. They said, we are doing Star Wars. All these things you thought would never happen, they're going to happen. Because Ahsoka's episode, you see her instantly. That shadow move through the mist and those lightsabers ignite. And she's cutting down people like a badass. We haven't seen great lightsaber like action like that in a while. So it was a breath of fresh air. I feel like the two biggest things before the last episode is one, that yeah, we see Ahsoka and we finally get that live action cast and we actually get to see her in Star Wars for the first time because she's not in Clone Wars. She's not in any of the prequels. Um, well, Ahsoka? Yeah. Well, yeah, she's in the Clone Wars. Well, I'm, a, I'm sorry, Attack of the Clones. Sorry. Attack That's of the Clones. Sorry, oh, the yeah, prequel yeah. movies. Yeah, she's yeah. not in any of them, so it's good to see that they brought her to life. And then the fact, like, I love that Boba Fett's still alive. I thought right? that was really cool. I know. And when at the end of episode one, when they teased that it's the guy, I was like, I actually don't think that's him. I thought it was one of like this, they were trying to do like a screen grab to bring you in. I thought it was gonna end up like not. I thought it was gonna be like a clone or something. Yeah, well, that's the thing because they they put that in there, and people kind of assume, oh my god, that's Boba Fett. But it could have been Captain Rex. It could have been you know any number of the clones. Like any because, clone that was on Tatooine. Yeah, or <laughs> like Tatooine's. The Star Wars universe is like favorite planet. So exactly. it literally could have been any clone. It could have been anything. But we end up finding out it is, in fact, Boba Fett. They bring that Legends element into the canon, which is amazing to see. Uh, How do you feel about the inclusion? Like, for me, I mean, like, I, I thought it was really great. He he comes in there swinging. He's badass, breaking those Stormtrooper Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, like, the, episode, oh the episode when he goes crazy and he gets his suit back, I, I thought it was better than Ahsoka's, Ahsoka's action scenes. I thought his moves and showing him right. and mm-hmm. putting him in the spotlight, I liked it more than Ahsoka's. Hmm. I mean, I am a sucker for the Jedi I, yeah. faith, so I you know I loved seeing Ahsoka do that. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was just badass. And then of course, you know, Boba Fett coming in there, he was totally badass. I mean, it, it did bring up some weird questions, like so he has his ship. What's he still doing on Tatooine? He obviously isn't that stuck. Like, I mean, yeah, and, and ha- he knows who Cobb Vanth is. Yeah. Uh, he's like, you know what? The, you, that ammo you found from Cobb Vanth. And like, so he, he obviously knows the guy. Why didn't he just go? You I know? mean, again, that's just like anything. And I think, like you pointed out, like with series, you're just going to have like plot holes and stuff when like well, the universe is just so big. It's so easy to say, like, well, why was he there the whole time? Well, they, the, the Favreau and Filoni have an explanation for everything. I think that they know all the because there are plenty of questions to be asked about all the new reveals, and I think that they, I mean, they've answered some, and so I think that they, yeah, they have know, questions, and I think they, they don't want to. That's probably one they don't want to spoil because so at the end of episode, at the last season finale, they announced that there's going to be the Book of Boba Fett, so he'll get his own show, which is probably going to tie into the future of the Mandalorian in some we'll probably get some aspects. Um, but yeah, that's probably an answer that we're not going to get. Like, we're not going to, John Favreau is not going to talk about it because that's something they want to show on screen. They want to show why he was still there. Maybe, I mean, like, right. They've got, they've got a plan. If I had to guess, it was because he wants his armor back and he thinks it's still there and like he's trying to hunt it down. Hmm. Oh, I mean, we see that he can still hunt hunt him down, and he knows like like he's got the capabilities to hunt him down. So, and he knows exactly who's got it. He could beat the crap out of the guy. So why didn't he just do it? So there must have been a reason. I think maybe like he knows the guy, and he's cool with the guy Tim having the, the armor for a little bit. Yeah, that was honestly uh, favorite favorite character favorite <laughs> actor that they had. Like just the cameo. Like Bill Burr came back, which was really cool because I like Bill Burr. Yeah, we haven't even but like see, about that. seeing seeing yeah, Timothy God. Oliphant in it was awesome because he's like he's been in he's been in season four of Fargo. He's been, and then he was in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and he played the same all outlaw like sheriff character in all three of them, and was like. Fantastic. And so here he is doing so that here he again, is and, doing and he just it knocks it out of the park. He was yeah, great. He, he so fit right in. I really enjoyed it, and I hope in season three they bring him back, like they did with Bill Burr, Carl Evers, um, and then uh, what's her name, the the uh, ex stormtrooper woman. Oh yeah, yeah. I I don't know why I always forget her name. They because she's like so few and far between. But yeah, I mean the whole cast is great, and I think I hope that they do bring 
Cobb Vanth. Uh, what's it? What's the actor's name? I'm sorry, I just didn't know him before. Timothy Oliphant. Timothy Oliphant. I hope they do bring Timothy Oliphant back. I'll be interested to see how they could incorporate. Well, I feel like that. they'd incorporate like, him like, into how, the are Boba they Fett show. To, yeah, into the Boba Fett show for sure. I think we can get into the future of Star uh, of the future of the Mandalorian and Star Wars TV in a little bit. We don't have to quite get there just yet. Yeah. So but, one of the things I want I want to get I just so like I love this the season of the Mandalorian, I have to like compare it to other stuff. So like for me, this is like a solid, like I think it's like a 91 out of a hundred. Like it's, <laughs> it's really good television. Like just, like I said, well made. It's, it's hot take. I think it's the be- most best well-made product we've gotten from Star Wars. I think it's better than all the movies. Like well, well-made wise. Like it's not better than the Empire Strikes Back. Like the Empire Strikes Back will always be the best Star Wars thing unless they somehow beat in in the future but just from a pure cinematography film aspect this season two was the best well-made thing top to bottom across the board compared to any star wars thing made and you know i think that's a fair argument to make because i mean the technology that they have at their disposal and the lessons they've learned along the way with like okay if you make it look like the prequels that doesn't turn out well but you can use i mean they've got these yeah, I mean, you've seen how they film it, right? Where they have these basically IMAX screens yeah. that come that do the background, and they f- they film everything in those studios, and it's able to look so real. Uh, so it just. Well, shows I think that, it's just you know, it's not even like it's 2020. So obviously the technology is going to be there, um, mm-hmm. but just like we've never had like stunning and perfect filmography before, for the most part. Like the pre- the sequel trilogy, we kind of got it a little. Um, but like the acting was like spot on phenomenal. Like Pedro Pascal was incredible. Like the supporting cast was great. Um, then we had moments like Baby Yoda didn't get old. Baby Yoda was something that easily could have been like a sh- like a mm-hmm. shock factor. Like oh, it's Baby Yoda. Like look how cute and fuzzy he is. Um, he's cute and like that's something that is hard to keep. Yeah, and so they did, they did that new, and like, they did a great stuff, job. Yeah. And like we got to see him eat a ton of stuff. <laughs> yeah, we sure did. <laughs> Which was exciting. Um, and then, like, they just, they gave, I think they just, like, and the storytelling was great. Like, they didn't, even though I said the formula was, like, kind of the same thing, like, the storytelling was there. Like, they did a good job of making sure, the even if you want to say it's a stale formula, that it was still good storytelling. And, like, I tr- I was, like, about to cry, tear up in the, at the last episode. Like, I, the whole they came so far from the first episode and Pedro Pascal's character and the storytelling to get him there. I like, it came so far. Right. Like the emotional stuff they did. I mean, this season to me, a was about finding a place for baby Yoda and B about questioning what it means to be a Mandalorian. Uh, no, agreed. And, um, because they, you know, they have the interactions with two types of Mandalorians, being Boba Fett, who is not accepted by the general Mandalorians. He doesn't even give a, he doesn't care about the Mandalorians. No, he it's just care. a he thing just, for him. Like his thing is he, it was his dad's suit and yeah. it's his suit. And then you bring in Bo-Katan from Clone Wars, who uh, is, you know, a Mandalorian in every sense of the word. Yeah. And in Clone Wars, if you don't know, she was in charge of leading kind of like a terrorist organization that was trying to reclaim Mandalore from its current leadership. I did not know And that, actually, after so. the conquest of Mandalore, yeah. So she's like a, she's been fighting for Mandalore her but, whole but life. But even her then, even then, they're like kind of like, oh, like, Mando, you're like yeah, old in so your ways. Like, like, no one does this anymore. Like, you won't take your helmet off. That's not something that like exactly. happens. Like yeah, exactly. Like you said, they're as Mandalorian as it gets, but they still take their helmets off like it's nothing. So it's you know about uh, Din Djarin finding out that you know there are different ways to be, and you don't have to necessarily subscribe. I mean, he can be however he'd want to be. Yeah. If he wants to continue to this is the way, and like you know, never we didn't really helmet, even he hear could. that said the second half of the season. Right, for sure. I mean, that yeah, they didn't really do go back to like the Mandalorian guild kind of a thing. But yeah, they uh I mean, just with first of all, they have him take off his helmet two times instead yeah. of one this season. Well, and both so for super emotionally impactful moments of him showing 
first growth and then second love. Well, yeah, and I th- so in the in the first episode, he takes the helmet off when Bill Burr makes his reappearance. I thought this them doing it was great because Bill Burr's like he's known as a comedic role, and the whole time like he's funny. So like that episode has light humor to it. Yeah, um, he steals the screen. When yeah, he's on and him. like he he goes he does the slur to man when he says in the car, "You people." <laughs> <laughs> like it's fu- he's funny yeah they let he's, him do his bill burr yeah kinda, so like, he's funny edgy humor. but then like you get the most emotional s- episode yet to date when pedro pascal has to take his helmet off in front of the imperial officers like something he's never done mm-hmm. he has to take it off and he does it all for and grogu because not he, like, just letting he, one person see his face yeah. a whole room of people a whole room of people know? and i think it kind of made a difference like and when I watched it, I was like, oh, these are all, like, Imperials. Like, he doesn't care about He's them. He's going to kill like, him in two seconds anyway. Like, he doesn't, it doesn't matter as much to him as, like, letting his friends, see, like, letting the people he travels with and, like, knows him see. But it's still a huge deal that he let him, that he did it. And the and chemistry, then, between Pedro and, and Bill Burr during that scene when he does that. Yeah. I mean. And, like, he does it because he, like, loves Baby Yoda and where we finally see his growth from, oh, like, I don't really want to have to deal with the kid. Like, it's more like it's my responsibility just to make sure he doesn't get killed by the Imperials to, oh, like... Like, this is my this, this is, is my, my boy. Yeah, this is my guy. Like, this is my son. Like, I care about him more than anything else. Like, I, yeah, he's, like, the most traditional Mandalorian less. This specific Grogu, right? <laughs> yeah, this he's specific Grogu, one. Grogu, I just said Grogu. Uh, I was making he, fun like, of him. He's the most traditional Same Mandalorian, and he's going to throw... He Honestly, he'll, he, he decides, I think, in that moment to throw it all away. When he yeah. says, I'll throw... I, it doesn't... My life doesn't matter anymore. What I think doesn't matter anymore. Like, this child's the most important thing to me right now. And now... The child is gone. So where does he go? So before we get into the final episode, there's a few things I want to get into. So one of the things I really, really enjoyed about the entire season was just like, yeah, Baby Yoda, I think, was fantastic. And this is kind of going to tie into the final episode. But when we see Boba Fett, he goes, something, something, I'm like my father before me. Like he says that line that like he's like his father before him. And then... I don't. Do you want to just get into the last episode? I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. Let's just yeah. get into it. Let's just Let's go into, into it. it. So, first off, how did you feel about the entire episode? We can we can save the reveal for a second. Yeah, I mean, the entire last episode was absolutely crazy. I mean, I like it's for most of the episode. It, I mean, it felt like just a normal Mandalorian storyline kind of. I mean. You know, it's exciting because it's it's the climax of the season. They got to go save uh, Grogu and everything. And it's the stakes are high. But then they just pull the blanket out from under you at the last second. And it became something so much bigger than I ever thought it could be. Do you want to say it or do you want me to say it? <laughs> okay, so okay. I mean, like, dude, when Luke came on the screen, I lost my mind. <laughs> like, I, and I texted you that morning and I was like, yo. It's going to be Luke. Luke's going to come on the screen. Like, he's the one who's going to come. And you were like, oh, no way. Like, I'd already no seen it. Comes. Yeah, well, I'd already seen it. And you were, like, trying to avoid spoilers. So I'm like, I better play the total no, and reverse honestly, psychology like, card. I, no, dude, so like, when, his, would, when, his even... ex, when his X-Wing flies across the screen, I was like, 100% it's him. And I was like, holy crap, they did it. And not only did they do it to, like, he shows up and saves the day, but they do it. They show his face. He talks. Like, oh. It was it was just un- right. It was fantastic. So, right, yeah. So for me, I, I mean, you, you say you noticed right when, uh, right when the X wing. Well, because I was gonna like, ask when did you like you know it could be cool. When did you know for sure? I mean, it was the X wing. Like you don't show an X wing like that in that scene. I think. Like yeah, just the but build up. it could have been just the Republic. Yeah. See, for me, I was a huge skeptic. I thought they would never, ever, ever put Luke in this. Just because I, like, I didn't think it could be done unless they recast and they made a big deal of the recasting. Uh, because that's a huge yeah, deal. Yeah, and they did. A, they did. So apparently they knew about, like, it's been, this has been out for a year. Like, they kept it a secret. Mark Hamill keep it, and everyone kept it a secret wow. for over a year. Since, like, last Christmas, apparently, was when they, like, either wrote it or, like, decided this is what it's going to be. So for mm-hmm. them to keep it under wraps, under wraps for, for a year, long. it's great. Wow. But, I, I mean, I guess... I guess I didn't actually know, but like when you see an X wing fly across the screen in that moment, but oh, that like, was your first. Thought, I feel like, you, like it has to be Luke, and then like it is. So um, just to see it, and uh, I, yeah. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> but so to get back to the Boba Fett thing, so Boba Fett says like I was, 
I wore this armor like my father before me. And then Luke says it. Luke says, I'm a Jedi like my father before me. Like, I love mm-hmm. that scene. Yeah, I mean, that's a callback to, uh, and then, to, yeah, to uh, Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi, he says so. it, so... Yeah, I mean that's the that's the nice thing about Star Wars is you know George Lucas always has yeah. said that Star Wars rhymes. There's things that mirror each other, and now they're integrating that through the whole uh, you know through the whole team. And I don't want to like so when R T D two and then uh, having R T D two there was cool as well. Like I didn't think that would happen. I mean I mm-hmm. guess they kind of go hand in hand I, at yeah. this part. But I mean that's like cute little fan service. But like thing. I'm I will like I immediately make I immediately when R T D two started doing his little dance and getting excited, I immediately knew like holy crap he remembers Grogu. From the temple. Ah, uh, that's like, no, he didn't. A hundred percent. Has to, because his memory's not wiped. I mean, maybe if he... <laughs> or is his, yeah, his memory's not wiped. No, so like, I don't think... Our he got excited like, to see Grogu, like... I mean, maybe he was just being... See, I'm, this is how I am with Star Wars, is until there is evidence, proof that I guess that so. is like... Because for me, I didn't believe it was see. Luke until we saw the gloved green. hand yeah, holding the, the lightsaber hilt that i recognized even when it showed green lightsaber i was like that could be you know that yeah you know, i mean it could have been a great a, opportunity for them to just introduce to anybody Jedi. else so yeah so i'm i'm always until it's beyond reasonable doubt so like that kind of r2 thing that's a that's a fun theory but you know i don't who knows may i bet you they'll do that in like a Lego Star Wars thing where yeah. R2-D2 <laughs> tells a campfire story or something. No, I mean, that's what uh, I immediately thought. But I think, for me, the most powerful part of that episode was that he, again, takes off, Pedro Pascal takes his helmet off so Grogu can see his face, and it's mm-hmm. not just a Mandalorian helmet. It's his face. Everyone sees him. Everyone sees his face, and... Like it's fantastic that he does it, yeah, and I, it made me want to cry. Touching. Having Ooh. Grogu like holding his leg and hugging him, and I loved and it. And then to see him go away, I mean, oh my god! So who knows where it's gonna go next? But I mean, it just sucks that Luke looks so bad. I thought they did a good job for what they had, and it was Mark dude, Hamill voicing him. So like, it was Mark Hamill, but the dude, this the the CGI face just looks. I so thought it was bad. okay. You can't. You're telling me that some like dude on YouTube can't do that better. I don't know. I don't know. I think that it was. So it was something I remembered that I wanted to talk about. One of the things that I, oh, did I just lose it? Oh no, I got it again. Um, sorry, I'm a little spacey tonight. One of my favorite things throughout the whole season is that, like, Mando doesn't know what a Jedi is. That like no one like people like no one really knows what a Jedi like people know like Boba Fett knows what a Jedi is but to like Mando like he's like oh like what is this like even like even like Moff Gideon doesn't know like what he doesn't say because he says this child not disclosing information he he said oh this child has extraordinary powers well because he 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 doesn't want to I mean. I think he knows exactly what but he But like in, in the old even like the first six movies, anyone says it's a, Je- a Jedi, Jedi, Jedi. He knows right. the force, Jedi knows the force. Which is interesting because it shows how far the Jedi have fallen and it yeah. but it confuses me. But like, I feel like how do the how do like the Republican uh, Republic the uh, new Republic soldiers and and uh, like everybody around how do you not know who Luke Skywalker is at a certain point? You know, like I mean, I guess they're so far. Like they talk about how they're out on the outer rim for most of it. So maybe they're just guess, so far like, out and so far removed of, like, the from Republic. it. Yeah, I don't know. That, I guess that's the tr- that's that a is big... the thing. Is like they they point out we're in the Republic. You know, Imperials Republic. It doesn't matter who it is. Yeah, I you mean, know, I agree. Like, conquerors. how do you not know who Luke, the guy who took down the de- who took like, down if you were the Empire and the Death the... Stars? Like, how he has got to be a legend, right? At this point, but like that's one of my favorite things is that they. Mando does like they don't like talk like but the yeah, Jedi. Mando doesn't. It's, it's like what's a Jedi? Like they, well, they t- they tell him at the end of season one because they introduce the fact that the Mandalorians and the yeah. Jedi are ancient. But he enemies, has like no idea, and he's like kind of yeah. cool. He's like, oh, like it's well, funny. He knows it's, that it's dangerous, yeah. and he knows the contradiction. Yeah, of it, but, but like he, doesn't he, he has know no that, idea like, the sco- the scale of yeah. the Jedi Order. No, like, like what none. it used to be. Like none, and I think I, I love that. So I probably would say like that, and then the fact of the like the two callbacks of. I'm a Jedi like my father before me. <laughs> and then Boba, even Boba Fett saying it, because that's cool. And I've just been seeing videos of Jango Fett getting his head cut off all week uh, in response to this. R.I.P. Uh, Jango Fett. Yeah, they, it's like, great that a Fett finally gets some respect in live action. So it's it was cool. I think just like top to bottom, that episode was, was awesome. Like it's by far the best episode of The Mandalorian. 
I mean, I, you can't even debate me on this one. You can, like you can't. You well, can't. I'd we have had to think because like it. the first half of the, you can't say that the last five minutes of it make it the best. I mean, it's so impact too. So I think we have to consider a little bit more like the lead up in order to be able to say that. But I don't have enough thoughts on the lead up right now to be able to. So okay, so to, before to before we get not, into our last segment for today, what was your favorite part of the season? Well, what's sticking I mean, with you? What's like, running through your head? I seeing Luke come back in, and we get to see him, and it's like the you know it mirrors the Darth Vader scene from Rogue oh, One. Oh yes, it does. And um, I forgot and about like that. And like the that way he fantastic. really just cuts through this, like smoke lightsaber. He extends. does it with such poise, and and just well, having at this him point, he's a master. Like, like he's a true Jedi yeah, master. Yeah, like this it's one. Luke from Return of the Jedi, just a couple years later, where we get to really like see him in the heat of be in Luke Skywalker and he's still so like wise and composed now I mean obviously it was great too Ahsoka being back and everything so really the, like I mean I'm a big sucker for the Jedi and and seeing how that storyline continues I know the Mandalorian's supposed to be its own thing kind of separate from that so I loved getting to see those moments but not what I expected. no I agree I mean I think yeah most people's favorite part is probably going to be Luke um but so the last thing we'll get into today is like what well, the what the what do you think the future is going to be of the Mandalorian just cuz so they confirmed that there'll be th- season 3 and 4 I believe they did I, I saw the other day that they did that John Favreau teased like hey guys don't worry season 3 and 4 is going to get into these topics or something like that I saw that they're going to do a season 3 and 4 okay uh, cuz I just wonder uh, so I guess when they're going to take that is there they're gonna re do another siege of Mandalore to you know take take back. The so one of the topics planet. that you just kind of talked about how like it's like you just go crazy for Jedi. I think they might have set themselves up to fail here because like I think we got the reveals. I think season three is gonna be a lot less Jedi focused. No, and like the totally. Only, I think it's the not only way be it at all. is. So one of the things is for me is it's like maybe this. I don't know the stats on how well performing the TV show is, but it has to be like. The most popular, if not one of the most popular TV shows of the last two years. On, and, especially on Disney+. And Plus. it's got to be all because of Grogu. Not, not I all. Mean, be, okay, but Grogu built most of the hype. Like, a lot of the hype. Yeah, people Gro- people who don't like watch the, the show are watching it because they're like, The meme guy. that hooked yeah. people in. So I think they have to continue to have Grogu in in some parts. So I think the only I way you can really will. do it is if you skip ahead in time a decent amount or if you just have the occasional like That's check-in, true. which I think they could do because they committed to having Luke in it. And they I've committed heard some people to the talk CGI. about that where he can be a check-in character. This man's going to live to 900. He yeah. could be in a, a check-in character no Forever. matter what era of Star Wars yeah. they're writing. For the next thousand years of Star Wars, essentially. But I think they have to keep him in in some... I mean, and it's not like they... Like, Mando and him didn't spend a lot of time together, so it's not like they can really have that many flashbacks. Uh, I mean, they can do little ones. Like, there's definitely going to be a flashback of Pedro Pascal missing Grogu and him holding his little tiny steel ball. Right. Like, they can't just not address... He, they're obviously going to address um, the loss that but he's I, so, feeling. So, I think... Move here's, here's my bold prediction. I think what's going to happen is it's going to fast-forward in time between see, either season three or four. I think it's going to happen at the end of season three. It's going to fast-forward in time to when Kylo Ren is older, when he's Ben Solo still, and it's going to be, like, something... It's Luke's going to sense the dark side coming with Ben, or... Or it's about to happen. So we know when Kylo uh, brings the temple down and kills all the other, um, like they're not younglings, the trainees, mm-hmm. that he also kidnaps some of them. Here's My theory is that he's going to kidnap Grogu. Luke's going to call Mando and say, hey, he's got the kid. And then Mando's going to go get him back. And the en- either the end of season three or the end of season four will be Mando versus ba- Kylo Ren, we're going to get to see... He's going to have the Darksaber. We're going to get to see a Darksaber, Lightsaber battle. He beats Kylo Ren. He beats Kylo Ren and gets the child back. Not going to happen, but that's my bold prediction. That is a very bold prediction. My skepticism comes from... I don't know if they could bring Baby Yoda in as in into the main storyline of something that happened right before the sequel movies. Uh, without having addressed the Baby Yoda in the sequel movies, um, so like I kind of feel like he's gonna drift off into obscurity, like I mean, that's go fair. off with Ahsoka doing some 
like yeah that's stuff also probably off in the outer rim like i think that he's not you can't bring him so centrally into things in my Opinion. So you pointed this out the other day. Um, since like Disney announced the onslaught of shows that we're getting in the Star Wars universe, right? It honestly. So if my theory is correct, that they need Baby Yoda to keep the numbers up. It could be any show. Well, you pointed out that they don't. They might not even care. They have so much coming that it's like, hey, if uh, like you can only have so much market share. Like you. You'll have the diehard Star Wars fans like us who watch. It does like even if we have to spend twenty hours a week watching the new content they put out will watch it but for the most part you have a lot of casual watchers so right. people who would probably only like watch one or two hours of like a new tv show a week suddenly it's mandalorian with baby yoda or like the obi-wan Ken versus the obi-wan kenobi show versus the Be boba fett show like you're gonna have so much competition within mm -hmm. disney that maybe they just say like who cares like let's tell the story we want to tell the I, do you know when the Obi Wan Kenobi show comes out? Uh, not exactly. So like well, when that comes out, you honestly Baby is gonna be an afterthought. To have Hayden Christensen back as Anakin, it's, right? Everyone's well, gonna be on and that. And they can only really do one show at a time because a competition and b they want to keep people subscribed. Yeah. So they're gonna release one and try to have that go weekly. Yeah. And so then I, when I, that ends, I misspoke. The next. It's not like they're gonna release it all on like a Friday. They're gonna like no. have it out. But the attention's gonna probably be more so on like the new shows, especially like if Baby. If Grogu's not in it, they're gonna have to do. Like, I think they're gonna tell a story. I think they're gonna go back to Mandalore, like you said, and there's gonna be a siege. And I think they're gonna tell the backstory of that. Right. And I think they're gonna we dive have a lot in to address because he has the dark saber now, but Bo wants it because Bo is trying to take back Mandalore, and you can't uh, take back Mandalore without the dark saber, and you can't have the dark saber unless you want it in combat. So that's gonna challenge their relationship. Yeah, and, and so I see for that reason. Din as kind of a not as not exactly the main character in that story going forward. That's fair. So I think it's going to be I think he is going to be the main character and I think it's going to be continuing to explore what it means for him to be a Mandalorian and like further go down yeah. that rabbit hole of do I need to keep the mask going like what matters to me now mm. that the thing that I literally just I think like he decided at the terminal that my life doesn't matter. It's Grogu's life. And like what I was raised right. on doesn't matter. Like this is my new life. What I found matters more than how I was raised. So now exactly. he's going to. And he could be the one to unite all of these Mandalorians yeah. who are like, you know, the only way they're going to ever take back Mandalore is if the Mandalorians from Agreed. every sect of the, you know, belief or uh, bloodline come together. Yeah. You know, and I think, gonna like a, I think it's going to be like a. I think it's going to be like a self development, uh, coming of age story of him of like, hey, who am I now that I just lost Grogu? Yeah, he could be the chosen. You know, he's going to be Jon Snow. Yeah, like, like, yeah, who, but like, he's going to have to find himself now and find what right, matters to him. Yeah. And he's going to. I think that's what it's going to be. This is his first time alone as a changed man. Yeah. Because he his flipping switch was when he decided not to give Grogu up. Or, you know, baby Yoda at the time, yeah. the child at the time. And so he hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been alone out in the world uh, conducting his own mission since then. He's been serving uh, the mission of this young lad. So, yeah, it is going to be super interesting to see how I mean, he, like, shapes into his own The possibilities character. are endless. And considering from season one to season two, we had no idea what was going to happen. Like, you couldn't have predicted any of this. No, none. Like, none so, of it. Well, I feel like you like maybe... Like, Boba Fett. There was inklings of Boba Fett. You could have maybe and said, like, oh... We, Ahsoka like, leaked forever ago. Yeah. So, like, we could... We heard about those things. But even if, like... That's still but a crazy season. That's still a crazy season. Like, uh -huh. like even if they would have just given us Boba Fett, people would still... This still would have been a good season. Uh -huh. But they, like, went so endless. Much. But, like, they, who they, knows what's going to happen? Like, who, who knows what they're going to introduce and do and, and what they're right. going to explore? And, uh, and you know, in Favreau and Filoni, we trust. Yeah, Favreau, I mean, yeah, he's fantastic. He's Yeah, I mean, for God's sake, have him run. I just <laughs> wish they would have had him in charge of the sequel movies. Give it to somebody with a plan. Those that's movies, a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic because those movies for a whole other podcast. So, ugh, I hate them. Well, I feel like that's a good but <laughs> I'll watch stopping them. point. Let's yeah. see if any other topics you wanna you wanna share before we cut it off here. I don't know. I've covered it. I mean, I just think that they did a great job of introducing new stuff. While like I initially, I was hesitant about them introducing new stuff, but the fact that they're spreading it all out into different shows instead of keeping it all the Mandalorians just running into the 
new character of the week. I think you know it's gonna. I'm I'm happy with how they did it, and I'm happy with what the future is gonna be like. I'm excited for not only the future of the Mandalorian, just the future of Star Wars, because like this non. Honestly, when the Mandalorians are not that important, like we knew it was going to be exciting and they were going to explore something new, but imagine what the Obi Wan Kenobi show is going to dive into, well, and what the Boba that's the book be of Boba so Fett's cool, going to dive be so into. So self-contained, yeah. and I think they're going to do really interesting stuff that harps back on the prequels, mm. which we honestly are ready for. Yeah, so should be super cool. Well, Bridging I think, the gap. I think we just hit forty minutes, so uh, and you know I feel like we gotta cut it off here. I think we st- we're probably only at like thirty nine or something because we let it go at the beginning, but we should cut it off, or I can just keep talking. Until oh, well, honestly, we really this is a topic point. that we could both talk about for like another hour. I know. I mean, Star Wars is that's my favorite franchise. It's like <clears throat> the greatest greatest thing to me. It's just like you know, it's what makes me feel connected with the universe in some ways. I so. can't argue with you there. And the Mandalorian <laughs> is honestly, it's brought me so much joy, and I. You know. And I'm so happy Brady brought me this as a little Christmas present today. For all so. the people who don't watch <laughs> on YouTube, uh, we have a physical Baby Yoda plush yeah, toy here with now. With like so. a nice kind of rubbery, I, what material would you call its little dome? But it, you can knock on it. It's actually kind of solid. It's not just stuffed. And it sits, it's plump, it's <laughs> life-size. I love this little Grogu. Well, anyway. I guess, yeah, from uh, the Pricey Popcorn uh, Studios in Benny O'Kay's basement, thank you guys for watching and listening wherever you get your podcasts. We appreciate your support. And uh, honestly, if you watch this and you didn't watch The Mandalorian yet, you're you have crazy. to, you're crazy, you're one, you're <laughs> crazy, and you, but go watch it. Like, go watch it start to finish and just, just get Instantly. through it. Get, uh, it's, you know, um, Disney Plus, you can share unlimited screens, so get your friend it is Disney wor- Plus. It is worth Disney password. Plus. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well. Uh, Thanks for rocking with us so far, and uh, we'll talk to you guys probably in the new year with a new podcast. So uh, take it easy. Yeah, bye-bye.